At the northernmost reaches of Lake Huron, Drummond Island is considered to be the jewel of the lake. Mark and Jake Romanak of Fishing 411 never touch foot on Drummond Island, but they certainly showcase what can be described as an overlooked lake trout fishery. The countless sunken islands and shoals found along the southern edge of Drummond Island amount to world-class lake trout water. There's not another boat in sight, but that doesn't stop our boys from landing lake trout after lake trout after lake trout. up dad <laughs> I think that fish missed it three times before he finally ate it it's one of the cool things about lake trout is just how aggressive that they are and in my opinion one of the funnest ways to catch a lake trout is with a jigging rod in your hand well, holler when he gets close I'll grab a net for you he's coming up pretty good so this might not be one of those lake here on giants we're looking for today but you never know, you get up to the boat and freak out too, so. Let's see here. Oh, it's just a thumping. That's a pretty decent fish, I can see her down there. Oh yeah. I'm gonna grab a See them bubbles. Boy, look at them bubbles coming up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't, like, he didn't like that boat too much, did he? Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> they are fun on like tackle, aren't they? There we go. There we go. Good for you, kid. Nice fish, Dad. That's not a bad lake trout to start the morning off. Hopefully we'll see a few nicer fish than that today. But no one's going to complain on a lake trout like this and catching them jigging, man. That is the way to do it. Today we're going to show you exactly how to target lake trout uh, jigging by casting and vertical jigging uh, with a bunch of different presentations to get it done. But you know, when I was fighting this fish, I said, look at those bubbles. A lot of times people think when you target lake trout in deeper water, and today we're targeting them in that 100 foot range, that it's hard on them. But these fish can decompress their swim bladder, and this fish right here will have no problem going back. You could see it by the bubbles as he was coming up. It's time to put this one back. Woo! Oh, big one. Sea fish, catch fish, I guess is what this game is. Never underestimate the value of good electronics. Oh, it's one of them pink salmon. Look at that. You want to land in that, Dad? Yeah, let's take a look at him. I want to see him up close. It's not uh, a common species here in the Great Lakes. It's a pretty big one, too, for a pink. He's looking for uh -oh. Uh oh Oh, he's off. Nice net job yeah. there, Jakers. Nice. I farm that one. <laughs> <laughs> see that just going off the screen? 
that red mark right here just going up the screen is what that fish was. I saw him come in about 20 feet off the bottom, lift it up and bam, he was there like right now. So that was the illustrious pink salmon you don't hear much of in the Great Lakes, but they, uh, they do run the St. Mary's River, which is not very far from where we're fishing right now. So it doesn't surprise me there'd be a few of those around. We might see some more of those today. Are you going to farm this one to make it uh, uh, no, make it I, even, I or what? I wouldn't do that. Look, he's all rolled all over himself. I wouldn't do that to you, kid. You know, these pinks are almost a give me when they come underneath the boat. We're out here jigging for lake trout, but these pinks come in suspended, and they're very willing to eat. <laughs> Apparently so. It's moving back this way. There we nice. go. That's a little bit better. Show this pink salmon off here. That's oh, a pretty fish, man. You know, pinks don't get super big, um, but they're super aggressive. And what's happening is we're, we're jigging for lake trout on the bottom, but you'll see these, these pink salmon come in suspended in the water column. You reel up to them, and it's almost as fast as you reel up to them do they bite. So it's a nice bonus fish out here. And these are all natural fish. They haven't stocked pink salmon in the Great Lakes on uh, Lake Huron system in a very long time. So these are all natural fish, just kind of doing their thing. And they're heading up the St. Mary's River uh, to do their spawning here shortly. But they're out in Lake Huron still right now. Uh, what a fun bonus fish. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Dioa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure Ruthlessly Effective Bait Sense. There's a fish. Yeah, baby. <laughs> this is fun. It's pretty hard to beat light tackle jigging. It is pretty hard to beat it. Man. You know, as Jake said earlier, we're going to use some different presentations today. And, um, it's not a big deal about what they bite. There's a lot of things these lake trout will bite. Um, you can get them on jigs and paddle tails, and you can get them on blade baits, and you can get them on, on glide baits. There's a lot of things they'll eat. It's just about finding them, and when you find them, you can usually catch them. It's feeling like pretty good fish here, Jakers. Well, I'm going to have to get the net ready for you then, huh? I'd appreciate that, young man. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. That's a real good fish. Oh, look at that! Yeah, Jake! Holy smokes! Woo. There's the blade bait and there's the lake trout. Woo, I'm glad that kid's got fast hands. <laughs> Let me get this guy out of here. Woo. He was seconds away from being gone. Good job. Woo. Let's hold him up there. That is a very nice lake trout. <laughs> People that talk about lakers and they, they kind of say they don't fight and stuff. Well, they've never caught them on jigging tackle and light tackle. I'm telling you what, they fight hard. They are a ton of fun. You know, for the most part, if you're catching lake trout in 100 foot of water or less and you release them quickly, they go right back down. There's very, very low mortality. So you don't have to worry about hurting those fish if you don't want to keep them. Uh, on the other hand, if you do want to keep a few, they're pretty good on the table as well. You hooked up, Jakers? Yeah, I'm hooked up, Dad. Woo! You know, my dad was just fishing a blade bait, so I switched over. You know, one of the things about this lake trout jigging is there's really no such thing as the right presentation. You can fish swim baits, you can fish glide baits, you can fish blade baits. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, the different baits that you can fish for these. Really, the tough thing is it's just finding them. Once you're on them, you can normally get even, but my dad got a couple quick bites there with the blade bait, so I quick tied on a blade bait, dropped it down to the bottom, boom, got one on. So sometimes it's uh, it makes a difference in that vibration of a blade bait. Some days just really gets these fish worked up. That's a good fish, Jake. Nice fish. You swing your rod tip this way. Nice. Nice. Whoa, he's just flopping all over the place. That is a beautiful lake trout, and they are an absolute riot to catch when you're vertical jigging them. I mean, you can see right here, I have a box of my blade baits just sitting here, and about the time it took to pull one out of this box, hook it up on a cross lock snap and drop it to bottom, I got bit. So. Uh, what we like to do is we like to change things up and we'll talk more about presentation. First, I'm gonna get this one back and I'll talk exactly more about, uh, about blade baits and, and other uh, types of baits to catch these fish. 
So in front of me, I have a bunch of different lures laid out. And the one thing that's really cool about lake trout jig fishing is there's no such thing as the perfect lure. Uh, it's probably true for just about all styles of fishing. But if you come out here to lake trout fish, you're gonna wanna have a couple different types of lures. One of them is gonna be like a swim bait. So right here I have a jig and a paddle tail. Um, that's pretty much you're looking for a four to eight inch size. That six inch kind of be in the middle of the road, kind of a go-to size. Um, one, one and a half and two ounce jigs are pretty much what you're looking for for size. One of the things that you have to remember with a lake trout is they're very aggressive fish. So it's more about getting down to the bottom, um, not about a slow fall or anything like that. So use as heavy of a jig as you need just to get down to the bottom quickly. Um, another type of bait that we've caught quite a few fish today on is a blade bait. And the nice thing about a blade bait is there's a lot of rattle and a lot of vibration. So when those fish are charged up, it's pretty hard to beat that blade bait. Well, glide style baits seem to work really well. So like this shiver minnow right here falls in that glide bait category. One of the things that you're gonna see when you look at all the lures that we fish today, the one characteristic that seems to be the same is the color. Now for me, color is a confidence thing, but I believe white is pretty hard to beat when it comes to lake trout in any variation of that. White and black, white and pink, white and purple. But the first color in my mind is white when it comes to catching lake trout. Jigging spoons is another style of bait that works really well. Like you have a jigging spoon here, again it's white, and you have like another jigging spoon like a buckshot rattle spoon. Now the moral of the story here is, is there's no such thing as the perfect bait that's going to catch you fish every single day. So you want to have an assortment with you when you go out on the boat. And what I like to do is tie on a cross lock snap. That way I can easily swap out these baits throughout the day. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's elite sport shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Hey, I'm Mark Romanek. Whether your boat is an older model you've had for many years or a brand new boat you just purchased, one of the greatest upgrades you can add to your boat is something called a Smooth Moves Air. It's an air suspension seat, and the beauty of air suspension is you can never completely compress air, so it gives you the ultimate smooth ride that you're looking for. One of the other cool things is they can be installed with just basic hand tools. It only takes about five minutes to install Smooth Moves on your boat. When you order one, it's gonna come in one box. You're gonna get the actuator, you're gonna get a plate that mounts to your seat, and you're gonna get a seat base. Again, with basic hand tools, you'll install it in your boat in less than five minutes. The first step in installing a Smooth Moves is first to get yourself the seat base out of the box like this, and you're gonna install this. The beauty of this is that it fits the same hole pattern that came OEM standard on your boat, so there's no new holes to drill. Secondly, you're gonna notice that these come in different height patterns, uh, depending on how tall you might be. If you go on the Smooth Moves website, you can determine the exact right seat base when you're ordering to get the right height that fits you perfectly. The next step is to take the base that comes standard in the Smooth Move kit, and you're gonna mount this to the existing boat seat. I highly recommend you do this with a regular screwdriver, and the reason for that is it allows you to line the screws up so you don't have to have to worry about any of them getting cross-threaded. The next step is gonna to be to take the Smooth Moves actuator and you're gonna mount it on top of the plate you just installed on your boat seat. There are four bolts that are provided that are gonna allow you to do that. You need to get them in hand tight first, snug them up with your fingers, and then you're gonna need a 7 16 wrench. I recommend a socket set for this. Now that you've got the actuator installed on your boat seat, you're gonna flip it upside down and you're gonna mount it on the seat base that you've already mounted. The final step is that you're gonna to have to plug it in using an AC outlet and you're gonna to need to put in the predetermined amount of air that's just perfect for your body weight. If you're looking to upgrade your boat, you just simply can't beat the Smooth Moves Air. It's money well spent and believe me, your back is gonna thank you too. You know, if you've watched Fishing 401 before, you've seen a lot of graph on the console of our boats. We have a lot of Lowrance units sitting here. Uh, and the reason for that is for situations like this, it just makes it a lot easier when they're networked together, they're all talking together. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for these lake trout, and I'm kind of cruising around here trying to find um, specific fish on specific structure. And what I'll do is when I actually go over a fish and I mark a fish, what I can do is I can touch it on this unit here and I can touch that fish. And then I go ahead and I hit the waypoint and that'll save a waypoint, but what it's doing is it's saving it where the fish is. 
The boat's constantly moving because I'm constantly looking for fish. So it saves a waypoint back to where that fish is. Now I can circle back around and come back on top of that fish again. But when I save that waypoint, you look over at this screen here and you can see that the waypoint actually popped up on this screen. It's saved to this unit, but it also shows up on this unit. It makes it really nice so you don't have to go back and forth between your units wondering where your waypoints are. And then on top of all of that, it's even networked up to the bow of the boat. So whatever I do here at the console, it's happening up at the bow of the boat. So when my dad's up there fishing, he can see any changes that I'm making that are ultimately going to end up being more caught fish. You got to be patient. You got to keep moving until you find the, uh, the pot of fish you're looking for. And once you find the pot of fish you're looking for, you can get, you can get healthy in a hurry. That's a nice fish, Jakers. Oh, baby, I love this. He's just a thumping. Here he comes, Jakers. Oh, he's doing the death roll. Don't do the death roll. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful fish, Dad. Little Lakers there. Very skilled at getting off, and this is how they do it. Roll, roll, roll your boat. Trying to stay tight on them is tough. A little closer. Nice job, Jakers. That one's a little fatter. Forker. That one's a little fatter. Take a look at that guy. Still got the blade bait just lodged right there in his throat. <laughs> You know, you got to shop around a little bit if you're going to find blade baits that are big enough for lake trout fishing. Half ounce, five eighths, three quarter, one ounce is about what you're looking for. And there's not a lot of them in the market, so you got to shop around a little bit. But sometimes it's worth looking when you find the right blade bait. Looky there. Now, generally speaking, you don't need to use live bait to catch these lake trout, but it never hurts to have a little smell good on there. And uh, something that smells like it's good to eat, and uh, nothing's better, in my opinion, than Procure Super Gel. In this system, there's a lot of smell, there's also a lot of Cisco's, and so a herring scent is very similar to a Cisco scent. So that seems to work very, very well at getting a few more bites, uh, enticing these fish to bite a little bit more aggressively. While we launched a detour passage, we actually fished on the south side of Drummond Island. If you get on a mapping unit and you start looking at all the structure that's available out there, in that 60 to 120 feet of water, there's just an enormous amount of structure that's ideally suited for lake trout. Uh, there's more structure there than you can fish in a lifetime. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Let's talk for a second about jigging cadence. If you're a guy that does a lot of walleye jigging, you'd think that you'd adapt quickly to this, but actually lake trout jigging is a little bit more aggressive in my opinion. You're hitting that rod tip a lot harder, you're jerking your bait up off the bottom a lot more aggressively than you typically would for a walleye jigging situation. And uh, it can be very fatiguing. So what I've done here, I got the rod in line with my arm like this so that when I'm when I'm lifting it, I'm taking the pressure off from my wrist. Otherwise, just a couple hours of this, man, you'd be toast. So this allows you to jig like this aggressively all day long without wearing yourself out. And you're gonna have to jig aggressively if you're gonna attract these lake trout. You know, we've pretty much had ideal conditions today for this. One of the things that you wanna look for if you're gonna come out here and do this vertical jigging for lake trout is calm conditions. And the reason for that is it makes it really easy with boat control. I can basically position the boat exactly where I want over the structure and over top of these fish. If you look around today, we've had some weird weather today. We've had some rain come in, um, but it stayed calm all day long. And that's allowed us to stay on these fish all day. I'm pulling pretty good, Dad. I'm gonna come around here and see about helping you with a landing net here. Ooh. Well, if you look at the, the surroundings, it's very rare. You're not gonna find a day where Lake Huron's laying any flatter than it is today. <laughs> Whoa, Ooh. man, what you got there? Ooh. Oh, holy <laughs> jakers, what do you got? <laughs> I think all the all you gained, you just lost. Yeah. Well, wow, there you go. I'll tell you, whoever says a lake trout doesn't fight has not no come out kidding. here and caught him on light tackle in a jigging rod. Whew, I'm gonna take these sunglasses off. Pay attention, things got <laughs> serious here, Dad. No kidding. Wow, I can't turn this fish. My goodness. 
Right back down the bottom he goes. I think he stopped because we ran out of water. <laughs> he ran out of real estate, he hit the bottom. <laughs> wow. You know, if you look behind me, it's actually cleared up enough. It's been foggy all day, but it's starting to clear up enough. The fog's come in and the fog's gone away. But you can finally see that island really clearly behind me. And what that is, is that's Drummond Island. So we launched in Detour, Michigan today. We ran around and we're fishing that south side of the island. And if you look at a map, you'll go blind before you ever cover all this structure out here. And so it's just the perfect habitat for these lake trout to live in. That's a big trout. <laughs> look at that thing down there, Dad. That is a big trout. Oh, that's a dinosaur. You see that blade bait's T-bone. It's just on his lips, so he's barely lip hooked. Let's see if we can get him a little closer. This is gonna be a net full right here. Whoa, got him in the net, Dad! Woo! Yeah, that baby! That is a beautiful now lake trout. that is the trophy we've been hoping for. Dad, take a look at that fish right there. I wanna show that one off to the camera. That is a gorgeous lake trout. And uh, a fish like this is an old fish. So one thing you gotta remember about lake trout is they take a long time to get big. So we need to get this girl back in the water. Um, I have no interest in killing a fish this old. But what a beautiful fish. Sure makes me happy that she decided to bite today. And we have had just a ton of fun today. Playing cat and mouse with a lake trout of Northern Lake Huron. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah, that's a really nice fish. Well, I'll see if I can't get him under control here for you, Jake. Get his head up the way it belongs. There, there we go. <laughs> now that's a lake trout. Hey, my name is Mark Romanek. You've been watching Fishing 401. You get a chance, come to Northern Lake Huron and fish around Drummond Island. I bet you'll catch some lake trout just like this one. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorance Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. All right, we're going to get her back. Whew, sometimes things aren't pretty for TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 he come off. Oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, I hate when that happens.